Hey guys, this is Austin. So what exactly is a computer? Now obviously it's the tower that sits on your desk, or the laptop that goes into your bag, but what about the phone in your pocket, or even the watch on your wrist? How does it all even work? Head back to the 1940s, and one of the first computers was the ENIAC, which was based on vacuum tubes, with over 17,000 of them weighing 30 tons altogether, and taking up as much space as a large house. Completed at the tail end of World War II, the ENIAC was designed to test the feasibility of things like the hydrogen bomb, however at its core, it was simply something that could do a lot of math very fast. Today, the brains of a computer is called a processor, or CPU for short. Essentially what it does is the same thing as the ENIAC, although on a much faster scale. Instead of doing thousands of calculations a second, it's in the billions. While the hardware used to actually create a processor has definitely changed, the general ideas behind it really haven't. So if you showed a modern CPU to a designer 50 years ago, they would pretty much be able to figure everything out, although it definitely would be on a much, much, much smaller scale. Because modern processors are so powerful, it allows us to do things like create an online video service such as YouTube. So actually speaking of, let's take a look at this video. So right now, you're watching a 1080p video playback at 30 frames per second. So essentially that is, is 2 million pixels that are being changed 30 times every single second to create the illusion of actual motion. Now in reality, it's just a series of still images that are played back very quickly, kind of trick your brain. However, with a modern computer, you can play lots of images, play them very fast, and you really won't be able to tell the difference. However, if you're using a computer, say, from 20 years ago, the output might look a little something like this. So there's absolutely no smooth motion, it looks very jittery, it looks very weird. However, because there's so much power, so many transistors, so many calculations every single second, it makes fluid, cool looking motion like this over the internet totally possible. So far, I've spent a lot of time talking about more standard kinds of computers. However, the term computer actually applies to a lot of things, including not only your phone, but basically anything that can actually execute a program, which includes a lot of things when you start looking at it. Let's say I want to play a game of Flappy Bird on my Moto X. As I play, the system on a chip is lighting up a pair of CPU cores, four GPU cores, and 16 billion individual ones and zeros that make up the memory for storing the application. This is an enormously complicated series of parts that all have to work together perfectly to do something as seemingly simple as play a game. However, the entire system on a chip would actually fit on this dime. This is definitely a computer. However, I can see making an argument that so is this. I mean, yeah, it might be a printer. However, it does have a processor, it has an operating system, a screen, it even connects via Wi-Fi. Even a mouse and keyboard has some logic as well as some wireless capabilities. Something as seemingly simple as a hard drive has a full-blown processor that is more powerful than what some of the moon missions had. And even some webcams can actually have some pretty decent horsepower inside that you would never really expect. Now take a minute and look around the room that you're in right now. How many computers are around you at this very second? Mods are probably more than you think. Computers like this are absolutely everywhere around us today, and they're only going to get more and more common as things get cheaper and smaller. A term you're going to be hearing a lot about soon is the Internet of Things. Things like the Nest thermostat and Hue light bulbs that are smart enough to connect to the internet and report back to your phone are the first step. But before long, devices like these, as well as wearables, are going to be just as much a part of our lives today as phones are. Coming back full circle to the ENIAC, what 70 years ago required a computer the size of a house over a day to complete can now be done in a single second on a device that fits in your pocket. Just imagine where we'll be in another 10 years, much less 70. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I will catch you in the next one.